Hey, what up, y'all? Hope you're all all right. If you're watching this, uh, today is it's sometime April 27th, 19. Oh, Jesus, 2023. <laughs> um, I wanted to do a quick video, which it'll probably end up with me rambling a little bit, so bear with me here. Um, the last eight years, I've been working as a truck driver. And I just kind of wanted to uh, leave my input for some people that might watch this video that I can help them out maybe a little bit with some input or whatever not. Uh, I quit like two, three weeks ago probably. I quit my job as a truck driver and I was working out of Sioux City, Iowa and I came back to New Mexico. Um, the reasons that I actually quit, and I'm not going to put my company on blast at all because they're very nice people so don't ask. Um, I got hired in to do a certain route, going generally from that area, Marshalltown, up in Minnesota. Most of my route was supposed to be back and forth to the Oklahoma City area and down by Kansas City. Well, they pretty much got rid of my route and uh, hopefully the sun isn't too bright on this or anything. They got rid of my route and in 2022, I averaged about 3,800 miles a week, and when they got rid of my route, I lost seven, probably probably closer to about 800 miles a week, because they just, they couldn't keep me busy enough, um, yeah, it, it kind of sucked, I was not ready to quit, I was going to keep driving through the end of 2023, as my truck that I'm in, my Ford Ranger, I wanted that paid off or at least paid down as much by the end of this year. But, you know, in life, nothing works out the way it's supposed to, as everybody probably knows. So, uh, yeah, well, I'm back out here in New Mexico. I am going through all my training and certifications I need to do security, uh, armed security at that. I'll most likely be working in some federal buildings out here. I'm not sure exactly where or what, but... That's what I'll be doing now. And I'll get to spend a lot more time outdoors <clears throat> uh, doing off-road stuff and uh, camping, you know, that type of thing. So uh, I'll be able to work on my YouTube channel a lot more, which I'm hoping to get you guys some good content this summer and a lot of good information more than anything is what I'm. my goal is here. But, uh, yeah, if you're going to watch, if you're watching this video and you are either thinking about getting your CDL or you just started with your CDL. Um, oh wow, this video could end up being really long, but we'll see what happens. Uh, if you're thinking about getting your CDL, my advice is do not do it through a company, even though they're gonna pay for your training. And the reason I say don't do it through a company is because uh, you're tied to that company after you get your CDL through them until your training is paid. And I know there's a lot of people that have had a lot of good experiences doing that, but there's also some really bad, and a lot of that also depends on you and your attitude and whatever not. But, like, for instance, uh, this dude I know in Albuquerque went through, I ain't gonna put a company on blast, but he went through another company, went through the CDL course, which I told him he shouldn't, and uh, he ended up only driving like 1,000 to 1,500 miles a week for the first uh, few months, couple, I think he said like three months, and he his between his payments coming out of his check each week for schooling and whatever he owed the company, he was pretty much broke. As in fact, he was bringing home less money than what he made before he decided to get his CDL, and he got his CDL to get himself out of that that hole when she wasn't making a lot of money here in Albuquerque. Actually, I think he was in Rio Rancho, but um, yeah, keep that in mind and make sure you're weighing all your options. I went to uh, custom diesel driver's training in Omaha, Nebraska. It took me 30 days from the time I went in there and got out of there and I passed everything fine, driving, paper tests, all that stuff. Um, a lot of it just depends on yourself and the teacher it's not just it, like there's a, there was a girl when I got into that school 
there was a female that had been there for two months already and they ended up telling her, you know, we can't keep doing this with you. She just wasn't getting, passing the tests you needed to test. So a lot of that is on you. It's, if you're gonna go to a CDL school or get your CDL through a school or a college or something like that, because some colleges do do it, make sure you're, uh, make sure you're actually paying attention and learning the best way that you can. I learn best by writing stuff down when I'm listening to it, taking notes and stuff like that, then rereading it later. Everybody's different, how they learn. Um, as far as uh, when you start driving, when you're with a trainer, being with a trainer is going to be absolutely horrible. At least it was for me. Um, it's... If you're with a trainer and you just got done getting your CDL and uh, say you're not clicking with that trainer and he you're not learning what you need to learn to for him, don't be afraid to go back and tell someone, hey, I need to ride with somebody else or something like that. And it's, 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 some trainers are just douchebags. It's a fact. And... Uh, yeah, I had some pretty bad experiences with the one trainer I had. Uh, he actually was trying to sleep naked in the truck when I was with him, um, making all kinds of, like, gay comments and stuff like that, which I did not appreciate. Uh, just I think he was bi, and at one point I threatened to throw him out of his own truck and leave him, and when we got back to our yard where I was at at the time, I ended up going in and telling him flat out, hey, you know what, I'm not getting back in a truck with this guy. He's got some problems. And that guy, I don't think he ever trained again after that, actually. But, uh, yeah, it was it, a lot more happened, and it was a very bad situation. And I almost lost it on him a couple times. But, uh, yeah, it just make sure you do what's best for you and your CDL when you're training. If you're not clicking with somebody go find somebody else, period. And uh, that is the best way to do that because you don't want to be with somebody that you're mad at or don't get along with. You don't even need to be personable, personal about stuff when you're in a truck with somebody training to keep it professional. But, you know, there's that whole uh, personality conflict thing that, uh, you know, not everybody gets along with each other, obviously. But, uh uh, now, when you're in your own truck and you're driving, you may or may not grasp backing up. Uh, when you're backing up, the first guy that I trained with, did it, the way that he was trying to train me on backing up, it was bad. It was I just I wasn't getting it. It took me forever to get backing up. Um, watch your tires on your trailer. Don't watch the back of your trailer. That's that's the best advice I can give. And if your tandems are forward at all, make sure you're just make sure your back of your trailer isn't going to swing around and hit something when you're trying to back into a spot. <clears throat> Use all the freaking room you need room you need to when you're backing up and or turning corners even. Don't be afraid. Get you know goal that whole goal thing. Get out and look. Don't be afraid to get out and look. Don't be embarrassed about it either because it's you back into another truck or a trailer and a truck stop when you're trying to park or even back into a dock or something like that, that stays on your CDL. I don't remember for how long exactly, but it counts as an accident if there's damage done. A lot of truck drivers, if there's no damage done, both parties, they're not gonna bother reporting it because they don't wanna deal with it. But if there's significant damage, um, yeah, it's going to count as an accident on your DAC report. So, uh, just be careful when you're backing up and learning how to back up. It's it's much better to be, to look, learn your angles, watch your tires, not the back of your trailer. Watch the path that the tires are going to be taking when you're backing up. Um, you know, if you're, if you're in a day cab by chance, it's a hundred times easier to back up in a day cab. If you're in a truck with a sleeper, uh, look if you need to. And don't be embarrassed about it. If you're going to run into people, <clears throat> they're going to be flat out pissed off at you. 
<clears throat> because you're taking so much time to back up. I don't know how many times I've actually been in a at a truck stop or watching someone back into a dock and they're having a hard time with it <clears throat> and someone uh, gets out and starts telling them to hurry up and then I don't like that very well and I don't deal with that very well so I end up getting out and telling the other guy that's giving them a hard time some crap that's just how I am and then I help the person out but uh, <clears throat> yeah just be careful out there <clears throat> Damn. Sorry. Too, er too early in the morning for that, I guess. We're talking this much. Um, the other thing is, in your truck, uh, there's the whole diet issue. Eating. I know it's hard, and I know you're in a hurry, and I know you're going to be tired. Stay away from fast food. Stay away from fast food. If you're working for a company that's not giving you a refrigerator in your truck, <clears throat> you're with the wrong company. You should not have to buy one and plug one in. I'll flat out say, if you're with a company that does not have inverters, um, uh, refrigerators, you know, a clean truck to give you, as soon as you have the option to get in with somebody that does and you're doing over the road or you're gone during the week or whatever, you definitely need to do that. Uh, <clears throat> microwave. It's probably the most used thing I used in my truck for food. Um, I used to keep... Uh, the last truck I was in was a 2022 Kenworth T680 Next Gen. Uh, the refrigerator. It's one of like the file cabinet style refrigerators that you can slide in and slide out. It worked well and I was able to manage it was smaller than what I had in my Freightliner previous to that but it worked well, it kept things cold um, the only thing I really didn't like is I eat salad a lot when I'm like you know, trying not to gain a bunch of weight that's what I pretty much eat daily is salad and uh, it just my lettuce would go bad like you'd open a bag of lettuce two days later you couldn't eat it because it was brown and slimy and gross uh, but yeah, your diet, I mean, if you have food, any type of food allergies or something like that, you got to pay attention to what you can eat. Stay away from sugar. I know it's easy to grab a, a fountain drink and whatever. Um, I'm a huge coffee drinker, not so much hot coffee when it's warm out. And uh, yeah, no sugar, no sugar. The creamers are where you get the sugar in your coffee. Coffee's not so bad to drink. You just need sugar-free creamer, which isn't bad. Uh, in my truck, I had a uh, microwave. I had a little tiny air fryer. I had a electric frying pan and a bullet blender. And uh, most of the time, when I was on my 34-hour break, that electric frying pan got used every single week. Um, I, I would cook up. I had an electric frying pan. If you're familiar with those, they kind of have like the higher walls on the side of them. I would usually cook up, I would go buy like the beaten eggs, like the full half, like cartons of them or whatever. I don't know what size they are. Two quarts, whatever that is, or something size. I don't know. But uh, I would cook those. I would get some ground sausage. I would cook that up in the pan first, dump all the eggs in there, and then I would usually put green pepper and a whole bunch of black pepper or uh, whatever. You don't want to cook stuff that's going to splatter around a lot because that will leave grease all over the inside of your truck. Even if you have a lid, you have to take that lid off sometime. And I was pretty picky about keeping my truck clean, so that uh, I never cooked anything that splattered a whole lot. That's one thing you have to keep, keep track of. Bacon. Bacon is a no-go in an electric frying pan in a truck. Don't, don't even try it. Unless you're going to do it outside your truck or cook it in a cardboard box, which I would not recommend because you don't want that box catching on fire. But, uh, yeah, food. Uh, if you're home on the weekends, food prep. Cook two pounds of hamburger to take with you and mix it with brown rice. Don't eat white rice. Um, brown rice is less fattening, I think, than white rice. I don't remember what the exact differences are, but 
I remember reading about him, and I know brown rice is a little bit more healthy if you're in a shark all the time. Uh, a lot of starch, though. And then, uh, you know, there's a lot of random stuff you can food prep and take with you that'll last a couple days in the refrigerator. Um, stay away from bread. Fruits and nuts are good. Uh, I'm a huge fan of honey roasted cashews. That was my thing. But, you know, if you got, again, the thing is, if your teeth are, have issues or giving you issues, nuts aren't going to be the base, best thing to eat because they're hard and you want softer stuff. Um, a banana in the morning is good. If you're sitting around a lot and you're uh, not getting your exercise, get some of the... Uh, the, uh, what are they called? The rubber bands that you can use for exercise. Go on Google and look up, uh, if I, I don't remember what brand I ended up buying, but they were completely awesome. They got handles you can attach to them and all that stuff. But get exercise, walk. If you're on your 10 hour break, um, I usually tried to eat a decent meal when I did my 30 hour break during the day. That way you're not eating a bunch of whatever before you go to sleep. And then uh, as soon as you do go on your 10-hour break, go walk. Make sure you have a nice, decent pair of shoes to walk with in your freaking truck. Um, you can go walk. Uh, you should, I mean, just random. It's different for everybody. But you should be able to walk one mile in 15 minutes. Easy. So take an hour when you go on your 10-hour break. Walk four miles if you have the area to do it in if you're home get some exercise you know you got you got to pay attention to your health which is one of the main reasons I stopped driving um, I found out I was diabetic uh, February uh, I had COVID February 2023 this year I had COVID um, I ended up going to the ER I had actually had no symptoms of it whatsoever other than my lungs were messed up and my sinuses were screwed up. No fever, no sweats. Well, not at first I didn't have sweats. You know, it was whatever. I went into urgent care twice and they even declined to give me a COVID test. Even though I told them I thought I had COVID, they said, no, you didn't. You don't have the proper symptoms, which kind of pissed me off because I didn't find out. I mean, I knew I had COVID, but they ended up sending me to the ER the second time I was at urgent care the ER tested me and they're like yeah you have COVID and they did like a blood test and all that and the nurse just stuck her head in my room at one point and said oh yeah by the way you're diabetic which I kind of knew because uh, I was drinking a lot of pop at the time I was going through I was buying those little bottles of Pepsi little bottles of Mountain Dew Mountain Dew is my favorite pop uh, you can't if you're into drinking fountain drinks to me there's nothing better than a uh a Fountain Dew is what I call it. Ice cold Mountain Dew from the Fountain Fountain Dew. But, uh, um, yeah, that stuff will catch up with you. Now, the reason I found, figured I was diabetic, I'm really good at doing searches for stuff online, Googling stuff, finding out info on myself, whatever. Um, my eyesight was getting really bad. And, uh, I hate people that drive in the middle lane. And, uh, um, my eyesight was getting really bad. These are prescription glasses that I'm wearing right now. They're prescription Oakleys. My, my regular glasses are prescription. And I got prescription glasses probably two years ago or somewhere around there. And I just knew, like, my eyesight was horrible. I was peeing a lot. Um, like, literally, like, if you're... Uh, peeing to the point to where you can't hold it anymore and you're literally going to piss yourself if you don't do something quick uh, you might want to go get your blood tested for diabetes now I'm not bad uh, I think for DOT you have to be under oh I don't remember what the exact number is I think you have to be under 90 for DOT when you do your physical because they do your piss test or whatever not and if you ever get a piss test and they test it for whatever I think DOT is under 90 My, mine's always under 90 I don't even check my blood sugar anymore um, like 
once every couple weeks if I feel messed up or something I'll check it and it's usually under 90 so I'm not really worried about it under 70 is health like considered not diabetic I think once you hit 70 or something they consider you a diabetic but you know what don't I'm not a doctor don't take my word for all that if you want the correct info and I could be wrong look it up yourself or go see a doctor if you think you have a problem that's the best thing to do um, but exercise and your your eating is the most important thing if you're getting your CDL or you just got it or even if you happen to be watching this and you've been a truck driver for years and you need to lose weight um, meal shakes are the way to go honestly especially since it's getting warm out right now uh, check out uh, what is it called Shakeology um, the cheapest place I've found to f f buy it at is on eBay. It's about 100 bucks for a bag. A bag will last you a month. And what I do the chocolate. Make sure you're paying attention to what you're buying if you're going to look at it. They have vegan ones that I've been told are not so great. And uh, whatever. I only buy the chocolate because I'm a chocolate freak anyways. Um, I do not know what the sugar content in that, that is. I have not looked. I've been... I haven't been eating it as much as I should be or was, which I will actually check that today now that I think about it. But, uh, yeah, Shakeology, it's a bag. You buy yourself a bullet blender. Um, you need a freezer because you need ice in your truck. Your truck needs to have a freezer as part of the refrigerator. You can go on Amazon and buy um, RV-sized ice cube trays. I, I kept four of those in my freezer in my Kenworth, and that was about all you have room for in your freezer, besides maybe like one frozen meal or something like that that you can fit in there. But uh, yeah, they, those Shakeology shakes are great. I think one shake, I believe, is 200 calories, and there's very little, there's little to no fat in them. Um, one of those are fine to eat before you go to bed. That's what I actually usually do if I'm waiting to get my place. If I get hungry later at night, I generally don't eat within three hours of going to bed now that I'm done truck driving. That's my own personal rule that I go by. But uh, Shakeology, yeah, 200 calories. Sorry if I keep getting sidetracked. Shakeology, 200 calories. Uh, the chocolate, what I usually do because I am diabetic is I buy the sugar-free peanut butter and I'll put like a big old tablespoon of peanut butter in the shake. If you have one of those bullet blenders, best way to go for your truck uh, for two reasons. They blend in less than a minute, whatever you're doing. And two, they take up little to no room, uh, which is another big issue in your truck. But uh, the, uh, yeah. So if you're gonna make a uh, Shakeology shake, with the bullet blender, what I usually do is I put a little bit less than half full with ice, the little small ice cubes, RV size. Um, I'll dump water in there about the same level as the ice, cold water, make sure it's cold water or ice cold water. And then uh, put your scoop of shake mix in there, which the shake will come with a scooper. Make sure it's level, not over full, or it'll screw up your 30 day bag whatever you want to call it and then uh, I'll put a scoop of peanut butter in there and then whatever else you want to add to it if you want to add like a juice for flavor or um, I usually put like chocolate almond milk or something in there or you know whatever just something with no sugar and no fat I wouldn't use normal milk just because it's fattening but unless it's like skim or 1% you can put it in there but Keep in mind, dairy products make you tired if you drink, eat or drink too much of them, too. So, uh, Okay, yeah, and then uh, as far as, like, the inside of your truck and stuff you should have with you while you're out on the road, this was one of the main things I wanted to talk about. Um, where should I even start? Showering. Make sure you have slides or flip-flops. Don't ever, 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 for any reason, let your bare feet or socks touch the uh, uh, the floor in a shower at a Loves or a Pilot 
or a flying J or wherever you may be showering at, not in the shower room, not the bathroom, not nothing. They are technically supposed to be sanitizing those in between each person to keep any kind of fungus or anything off the floor. People do get athlete's foot from walking around in there in socks and barefoot. It's pretty friggin' common. I myself, uh, the company I was working for, we used to use Loves and uh, Quick Trip. If you're familiar with Quick Trip, up in like the uh, like Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin area, not the Quick Trip with a Q, but it's a Quick Trip with a K. Um, yeah, I've watched multiple Loves when I've been doing laundry or something, just flat out not. Um, just go in there and wipe stuff down and get out of there. They don't even do anything with the floor. So protect yourself, your health. There's so many different things you can catch from somebody else in those showers. Um, when you're showering, plus you don't want to step on someone's kids, that's going to be horrible. But uh, do uh, showering, make sure you have your own towel, your own body wash. I use Axe body wash. I always had my own towel. Um, don't use the truck stops towels. The one time I tried to do that, I picked up a towel and it literally smelled like vomit. Uh, it was disgusting. It was, I've never touched, even touched one other than to clean my shoes since then. The washcloth that they leave in there I, is usually what I use to clean my shoes or boots. And then I rinse it out and leave it there. But um, yeah, showering, make sure you have all your own stuff. Don't use the truck stop stuff. And uh, it's better that way. You can keep track of it actually getting cleaned and whatever not. So better to do. Have yourself a dedicated bag for all your uh, your shower stuff, bathroom stuff, personal hygiene stuff. Like I use a uh, small Oakley duffel bag is what I was using. If you look up small, actually I would use a medium. Because you got to have a change of clothes and whatever not in there. Look up medium sized duffel bag on Amazon, eBay, go into a store, buy something that's not going to fall apart, and then, uh, oh, let's see, what else, uh, in your truck, make sure you have multiple pairs of gloves, the gloves are very important, now, I spent a lot of time going through gloves, trying to find the best gloves, that weren't gonna fall apart, that weren't gonna let my hands get all messed up while I was using them. The best gloves that I found, if you go on eBay or Amazon and do a search for double palm work glove, those are the hands down the best gloves I have ever found for anything related to truck driver, truck driver, truck driving. Um, they're going to be like the gray ones, like you can buy at the truck stop. Do not buy the gloves at the truck stop because they're pure trash. Uh, they're too thin. They don't have any... Yeah, they're garbage. Don't buy those. But the uh, double palm work gloves. The palm, the ones I'm talking about, the palm on them is going to have a green strip going across. Buy those. Those are amazing. And then... Uh, freaking homeless people just walk in front of you no matter what you're doing. And then uh, uh, have yourself a decent flashlight. Honestly, I would use rechargeable. I cannot stand buying batteries. Plus, that's just one of those things. When you're driving, it can charge. When you're sleeping, it can charge. Uh, flashlights. If you want actual decent stuff. Um, damn, I wish I would have brought my shooting bag, shooting range bag with me. Uh, flashlights, uh, my go-to brand for flashlights is Phoenix. Um, Olight is a decent brand. Um, there, there's a bunch of them. You can get Throughlight, Olight, Phoenix. Um, I'm not really one just for buying random stuff from Walmart or whatever and using it. I like to do review. I review everything that I buy online. I'll go on YouTube watch reviews, read reviews before I buy anything. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if it's socks or jeans or a hat. But yeah, electronics, definitely read reviews before you buy something. Spend the money and buy something that's quality. And uh, 
I got some stuff I got to do right now. So I'm going to end this because it's already going on 30 minutes and I am going to do a part two. This one will be labeled part one. I will do part two later on today. Thanks for watching.